Welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how you can perform a one sample proportion Z test using R. Uh, I'm using Anaconda and then Jupyter Lab with an R kernel that is running version 3.6.1 from R. Um, this is an alternative to the exact binomial test and I've come across two different versions. One which is sometimes referred to as a score test that uses the hypothesized um, uh, expected proportion and one that's known as a wall test which actually uses the one from the sample itself. So to show how this works I'm going to load in a example file which is an SPSS file so I'm going to use a library known as foreign to actually load this in and I'm going to select a variable known as gen gender which were the genders which were male or female uh, in uh, this survey and I'm going to omit any uh, missing values. So now that I get some warnings but that's fine because they're uh, dealing with other variables in this whole data set. The number of successes I'm simply going to select the first category uh, so my variable equals the first category, it's only going to select those and then it's going to sum up um, how often that actually occurs and in this case there are 12. Now I also need the total length, so how many samples do I have in total? 46, so 12 successes uh, out of 46. Now the prop test function can actually do this for us where x is the number of successes which I called k n is the number of trials and we can select a uh, correct either as true or false uh, if we want to see a so-called GH continuity correction. So I'm just going to feed it the k, the n and set correct to false and then print out the p value because that's the only one I'm really interested in. Well not the only one actually um, but the one I'm most interested in. This is below 0.05, it's 0.0012 uh, which indicates that this would be if you're using an alpha level of 0.05 as a threshold this would be a significant result so that would mean that the two categories were not equally often chosen. Um, usually we also then need to report the z-value we can get the statistic but actually the prop test is using a chi-square test which will lead to the same result um, but the test statistic is therefore slightly different. Um, the test statistic is actually a squared z value. So to undo that squaring, I'll take the square root and uh, it gives it a name which I don't want to see. So I'm just going to use unname. It calls it chi square or something. So that's no longer uh, accurate. This is the z value I might need to report. And that's the basics actually. Uh, we can verify if it's done it correctly by actually going over the formula uh, where we need an average which is then n times the expected proportion and a sigma which is the square root of that uh, mean multiplied by 1 minus the um, uh, uh, expected proportion. Now I'm setting my expected proportion to 0 0.5 so I can simply calculate that. Do the sigma, uh, just follow the formula along again using 0 0.5 as my expected proportion and then finally calculate the z-value which is minus 3.2437 which is the same as here in absolute terms so if you ignore the minus sign it's exactly the same. We could apply a Yates continuity correction because we're actually approximating a binomial distribution which is discrete with a continuous one the normal distribution so what we can do is simply say that we want to correct it uh, set to true and then we actually get our p-value for the corrected uh, Yates continuity corrected version and the corresponding is that value. Now if you want to perform the wall test uh, alternatively then the standard deviation is going to be slightly different. You then take uh, again the number of successes and divide that over the total sample size so basically the proportion that you had in the sample. That's the big difference with that score test. We can then simply calculate again the z-value in the same way but now using this um, standard deviation rather than the sigma and we can use then the p-norm function to actually calculate the two-sided uh, test. Absolute value of that z-value so that it, it will always be positive, put a minus in front so that it will always be negative. This calculates the left side uh, tail of the normal distribution 
and then we can multiply that by 2 to get our final um, p value. Similar for the Walters, we can also apply the Yates continuity correction, and then we also get the same results. Now, if you're interested in the appendix, I'll go over using a chi-square goodness of fit test. I'll quickly go over this. I just run the code so you can see what's happening. This is where you're actually using the chi-square value. Uh, as mentioned earlier, it's the same. So the, the prop test is actually doing the chi-square one. So no uh, surprise there. Uh, you then also need to report usually the degrees of freedom, which is simply one. The Yates continuity correction can then also, of course, be used with the statistic and the parameter of the degrees of freedom. You could then also apply an E. Pearson correction, which is uh, this formula over here. You take the original chi-square value and multiply it by n minus 1 over n. And that gives you this chi-square value with this p-value. Williams proposed a slightly more complex version, which boils down to this simple formula where you use a Q, which is here, and then you divide the chi-square value by that Q. So that again is slightly different, but all of them are still significant. Of course, you could also use a G-test, uh, that's available in the Desk Tools um, library. Uh, you then need the frequencies, which you can get by using the table function. The expected counts, uh, expected frequency, which is just the sum of all frequencies divided by the number of uh, categories. And then uh, make the expected proportions, which in this case is 0 0.5 for the first category and 0 0.5 for the second. We can then actually use the g-test function to get our p-value, the g-value, which is a chi-squared statistic, and again the degrees of freedom. If you don't want to use a uh, function, uh, you can actually make it yourself using the log function, and then it prints out hopefully the exact same results. The function also has a Yates correction, so there we go. And also you can set it to Williams, which is great, so we also have that one. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the Pearson one, but we can simply take the original g-test uh, statistic and then use that multiplication ourselves and use p chi square for uh, getting the p-value. Last but not least, there's also an option sometimes to approximate the binomial distribution with a Poisson distribution, uh, but that's usually only valid if n is enlarged. Um, and uh, p0 is very small. So I'm going to use uh, slightly different data then. I'm just going to say that I have 100 data points, my number of successes were 5, and uh, I have an expected proportion of only 2%. We need to calculate then a so-called lambda, which is n times p, and that's 2. Now, as you might notice, that should be below 5, uh, according to some. Um, there are some different criteria, so this one is should meet that criteria. We can then use the Poisson test function, where we feed it the observed successes, the sample size, our uh, hypothesized proportion, and I want to see it two-sided. And then just run it, and I get my p-value. I can also get the statistic, which is then the number of events and the total number of runs. Alright, and that was it. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'll leave a link um, on my website um, with a link to this uh, notebook and also an R uh, file itself. And hope it was uh, was useful. Thank you for watching.